good morning children children i welcome you all to today's session of physics and we are on to chapter 5 which is heat right children heat right we all know what is the utility of heat because if there is no heat then most of the food which we eat cannot be cooked right also sun gives us heat and there are other things also so we'll be discussing all this in detail in this chapter now children heat is a form of energy this is something uh, very important that you should know that he what is heat heat is a form of energy which makes things hotter right or cooler right it cannot be seen by us we can feel the heat by temperature effect it produces right so when heat is given in uh, to a substance its temperature increases and it becomes hotter for example when a utensil is kept in grass gas burner it gets heat its temperature increases and it becomes hot on the other hand when heat is removed from a substance then its temperature decreases and it decreases and it becomes cold right the si unit of heat is joule yes children this you should know by heart right and heat is sometimes expressed in calories also or in kilo calories if the heat is too much right then hot and cold in our in our daily life we come across a number of objects some of them are hot while some of them are cold right and usually we decide any if anything is hot or cold by touching it um right sometimes our sense of touch is not reliable to tell us whether it is hot or cold right then uh, what we do is we need certain equipments right from the above uh, we can conclude that we cannot depend on our sense of touch for estimating the hotness or coldness of an object we need some reliable measures for estimating the hotness and coldness of an object a reliable measure can be measurement of the hotness of an object and its is its temperature we will now discuss about temperature right a temperature of an object is the degree of hotness or coldness in an object the temperature of an object tells us how hot or cold it is a high temperature of an object tells it is very hot low temperature tells it is quite cold right for example for boiling water it is 100 degree centigrade that means it is quite high right so for melting ice it is 0 degree celsius which is quite low hence it is very cold now temperature is measured by a device called thermometer see children it is just a minute thermometer right okay so a thermometer has a scale marked on it which is used to read the temperature Now the units of temperature are Celsius scale. First, in this uh, or centigrade, we call it from both the name. It is Celsius as well as centigrade, right? And each division here is of one degree. And in Celsius scale, the lower fixed point is zero degree, and the higher fixed point is hundred degree. The other is Fahrenheit scale, and it starts at thirty-two degree Fahrenheit. see and ends at 212 degrees fahrenheit right also clinical uh, thermometers has the measurement from 99.95 degree fahrenheit to 110 degree fahrenheit right okay now children for you to remember here is something very interesting that the normal human body temperature is 98.4 degree centigrade the next comes is kelvin state is right named after thomas kelvin a british physicist who devised it right in this temperatures are called kelvin and they are denoted by this formula this formula you need to learn children see these three formulas okay now we move to the difference between heat and temperature heat is a form of energy whereas temperature is the degree of hotness or coldness in a body 
it does not determine the direction of uh, of the flow of heat temperature it determines the direction right that heat always moves from cold to hot or from a body of sorry from a body of higher temperature to a body of lower temperature heat is measured in joule or calories the same unit as energy and temperature is measured in celsius kelvin or fahrenheit now we have different types of thermometers depending upon their usage a laboratory thermometer is used for measuring the temperature in a science laboratory right a laboratory thermometer is made up of a long glass tube see children this is uh, the diagram is here right long glass tube having a thin bore there is a glass bulb b containing mercury which is joined at the lower end of the glass tube the top end of the glass tube is sealed after removing that the whole length of the thermometer glass tube is graduated in degree celsius the graduation mark on the tube of a commonly used laboratory thermometer are from minus 10 degree to 110 see this is something which you need to learn minus 10 to 110 degree centigrade laboratory thermometer can measure temperatures from minus 10 degree to 110 degree centigrade and this is called the range of the thermometer right children what it is called it's called the range of the thermometer right we can see a thin silvery thread of mercury in the narrow glass tube of the thermometer the upper end of the mercury thread tells us the temperature right okay now there are some precautions which are uh to be taken by using a laboratory thermometer the laboratory thermometer should be held vertically or upright while measuring the temperature right it should not be tilted otherwise it will give a false reading second thermometer should be surrounded from all sides by the substance whose temperature is to be measured the thermometer bulb should not touch the sides or bottom of the container in which substance is taken read the thermometer while its bulb is still in touch with the substance right now read the thermometer by keeping the level of mercury along the line of sight and uh, do not hold the thermometer by the bulb handle the thermometer with care next is clinical thermometer which we have seen in our houses also this is also called doctor's thermometer the normal temperature of a human being is 37 degree centigrade right and uh, this the generally the doctors are having it right then here there is mercury in the bulb right whose upper end tells us the temperature of the body the clinical thermometer is marked from 35 degree centigrade to 42 degree centigrade right there is a kink there which is there to prevent the back flow of mercury right the kink is there to prevent the back flow of the mercury now precautions the clinical thermometer should be washed before and after right it should be before using the clinical thermometer we should ensure that mercury level of the tube is 35 degree you would have seen the doctor jerking the thermometer read the clinical thermometer by keeping the level of mercury along the line of sight it should never be held with the bulb and handle the clinical thermometer with lot of care a clinical thermometer has usually two temperature scales marks one is centigrade the other is fahrenheit right both the scales are there for fahrenheit the range will be 94 to 108 degrees fahrenheit next we have is the digital thermometer right as it is believed that mercury is a poisonous substance and entry of mercury as an impurity can cause damage so in this digital thermometer everything is electronic and lastly we see the maximum and minimum thermometer it is used to determine in meteorological uh, office in weather department this kind of thermometer is there and it is it tells us the highest and lowest temperature reached uh, in the surrounding during the whole day right so um then the effects of heat let us come the first is change in temperature right if we increase the heat supply then 
uh, it gives out heat energy and its temperature decrease right okay when heat is supplied to a body solid liquid or gas its temperature rises when this hot body gives out heat to its tem its temperature decrease for example when you heat cold milk in a pan its temperature increase and it becomes hot and when you put this hot milk on the table for some times then it becomes cold again right change in size right when an object is heated it increases in size this is also called expansion and when that same hot object is cooled then its size also reduces an expansion in solids let us take two blocks of wood and place an iron or a tin rod in them fix the rod firmly on one side insert the pencil under the other end of the rod make it a pointer and stick it to a edge of the pencil place a sprit lamp under the rod and heat the rod this iron rod let us heat right you will observe that the pointer moves to the outward direction it is because the rod has expanded and when heated and pushes the pencil outward right so what are the effects of expansion on solid firstly gap between rail joints these are some practical applications gaps are left between rail joints to allow for expansion the long distance railway line is obtained by joining together a large number of steel pieces called rails small gaps are left between rail pieces to provide spaces see children this we have seen more often than not in our in the railway lines railway tracks which are there we had seen it the gaps are there and they are specifically so that when during heat this railway line expands then um these gaps are filled see it's like this it's shown in this diagram also right now uh i think we should stop here right so i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did in making it and until we meet again it's a goodbye